What about this little boy who was born with an extra arm? Is this an example of evolution? No. It is certainly an example of a somatic mutation, but not evolution. If the boy had been born with a wing or something that is not in the DNA for humans, then we could rightly conclude that there had been an increase in his genetic information to generate something new. The extra arm was the result of an error that caused his body to make an extra, useless and even harmful copy of the information already present for left arms. Doctors successfully removed the painful and inconvenient extra arm in order to try to give the tyke a normal life. But this extra arm serves as a silent testimony to the impossibility of evolution by mutations. His extra arm wasn't completely functional and therefore was more harm than good. If natural selection had been the deciding factor, such an addition would have been eliminated as useless and therefore not passed on. This example illustrates that a mutation to be preserved and passed on would have to provide a complete and useful improvement. Yet no one has ever registered a single case of a mutation producing something new and useful the little boy's arm would have been vastly more useful than any known mutation. And yet, it was removed because it was a severe disadvantage. Notice what this researcher discovered. But mutations are found to be of a random nature so far as their utility is concerned. Accordingly, the great majority of mutations, certainly well over 99%, are harmful in some way as is to be expected of the effects of accidental occurrences. Certainly well over 99%. What comes after 99%? Wouldn't it be 100%? Why didn't he just say that? Because if he did, he would have admitted the impossibility of the very thing he was trying to accomplish. In addition, he probably would have lost access to future funding for his research. Someone has asked, why are these quotes so old? One reason is that creationists have made use of the evolutionists' admissions of failure in the past, so that they are increasingly more hesitant to put in print test results which tend to show the implausibility of evolution. So the last great hope of evolutionists for a mechanism for evolution, genetic mutations, is another huge disappointment. It never brings any increase in the genetic information, only damage to what is already there. The truth is that there is no known mechanism that could have caused evolution to happen, either now or in the past. Genetic mutations, the last hope of the evolutionists, could be likened to a train speeding down the tracks. But instead of getting closer to its desired destination, that of evolutionary progress, it's actually going in the opposite direction, bringing only a degradation and destruction of the original genetic information. With this scientific problem alone, evolution passes into the arena of science fiction. Without a mechanism, there is really very little point in discussing the subject. But this philosophy doesn't just go away, and in public schools all over the world, the next generation is being taught that evolution is a proven fact. This is a bold-faced lie. There is absolutely no proof whatsoever that any life form came into existence by evolution. Those who attempt to show otherwise are frequently mocked were called unscientific for simply requesting that scientific evidence be presented. Is it not possible that evolution is Satan's lie which he uses to turn young minds away from the truth of God's word? Jesus described Satan this way, he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. We can be sure that Satan is very pleased with the forced teaching of evolution in schools around the world, since it is a lie that has led to the death of more than 130 million people in the last 100 years alone, not counting the murder of 50 million unborn babies every year. Yet it continues to spread and contaminate at an alarming rate. 
In the end, we must choose between two alternatives. Either we believe in the evolutionary lie, which cannot be observed happening today, nor does it have any known mechanism which could have caused it to have happened in the past. Or we can accept the factual and historical description contained in the Bible. To help with the choice, we should ask which of these two has the better track record? The theory of evolution with its many cases of fraud, deception, and error? Or the Bible, which has never been proven to be false in any of its declarations? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The God of the Bible sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die and pay the penalty for our sins. If we reject this great gift of love, then truly there is no other hope. We may as well accept Satan's lie and believe in evolution. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. It's definitely worth considering. Your conclusion about the origin of the universe and life have enormous ramifications for you and for the world in general.